It's just so amazing how the weather can change here in Missouri right at the drop of a hat. When I recorded me driving this truck up towards the camera, it was uh, pretty dark skies and it looked like it was going to start raining and give it about 10 minutes and it's sunny out and really windy. So hopefully I can get through the video without too much interference from Mother Nature. And I realized the action shot wasn't as cool because I had the hood up on this side, but I needed my lawnmower gas tank high enough in the air to gravity feed into the carburetor. I still haven't looked at the fuel tank in this truck yet to see what it even looks like. But anyhow, in today's video, I'm going to do a story time on my 1959 International AC-170 four-wheel drive. Now there's a very distinct possibility that you clicked on this video because you like heavy-duty trucks. Now maybe YouTube just randomly recommended this video to you, or maybe you do follow my channel and the videos that I put out. I just wanted to take a brief moment and talk about a channel that puts out some fantastic content that maybe you're not aware of. And this channel is J.C. Smith Projects. Now J.C. Smith is a gentleman that owns his own business. He works on heavy duty trucks. We're talking semis, rollbacks, flatbeds, dump trucks, box trucks, everything of that nature. Now chances are, if it's a heavy duty truck, he's worked on one. A lot of the times he'll buy box trucks and convert them into rollbacks or into dump trucks, flatbeds. It's really interesting to see how that process goes down. Now a lot of the times he'll actually sell these trucks before he's even done converting them, which is amazing. Now I like the channel. I like the content that he puts out. He does a fantastic job. He's a really nice gentleman that's actually helped me out as well. He's got his own grade all to move projects around. And it's really awesome to see his wife help him in the videos as well, to see a husband and wife team work together for a common goal. Now, if you don't know this channel, I'll link it in the video description below. Check it out. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to him. Just drop down the comment section and tell him Zane sent you. Now, this truck, like so many other projects that are on the channel, I've actually known about for quite some time now. I actually ran across this truck about four years ago on the outskirts of St. James, Missouri. Now this was sitting at a heavy truck repair shop and I always kind of kept it in the back of my mind that maybe one day I would just call and see if the owner wanted to sell it. Now around the time I found this truck, I didn't have my brown rollback, I really didn't even have that dump truck or heavy equipment trailer to go and haul something of this nature. And about 35 miles away from where I live at, you can only imagine if you call a towing company what they would probably charge to haul something like that home. So I always kept it in the back of my mind that maybe one day I would check and see. And when I was thinking the other day about how much of a hit that yellow F600 is, I thought maybe it was time to finally check and see if this truck was for sale. Now, whenever you're looking for a project, it's always something to keep in the back of your mind like me. Always try to respect someone's property and their privacy. I don't usually like stopping and knocking on someone's front door because I try to respect people's privacy. I don't like that when people do that to me. Now I do live on a somewhat busy road and I have had people in the past knock on my door and ask if something was for sale. Now I don't really mind that as much as I have the people that were bold enough to actually stop at my house, walk past the front door down to where my equipment is and start checking it out as if no one was home. Now, I really don't like that. I'm a private person, so I always try to do the same for other people in respect to privacy. So, another way of going about this is to kind of be an automotive Colombo in a way. And what I usually do is get on Google Earth and I'll search the address and you can get a good idea if a project has been sitting in the same place or not. So that's what I done. I was looking up the address and lo and behold, it was actually sitting in a business. Now, I thought this was just somebody's personal business, their stash of trucks that they work on and have for maybe their farm or something like that. But it was a truck repair shop. So I called them up and I was asking the gentleman about what the vehicles that he had. Funny story, I called and as soon as I started asking him about the four wheel drive international that he had, he didn't actually recall still having this truck. So I had to kind of give him a vague idea of where this was sitting at. And finally he remembered, oh well, yeah, I do actually have that truck and I probably would sell that. So I talked to him for about 10 minutes and one of the first things out of his mouth kind of worried me. He said, well, I know that truck's pretty rare. They didn't make a lot of them four wheel drives. So I thought right off the bat that he's probably gonna ask an arm and a leg for it. We talked about it for a little bit. 
He said the truck did have a good title, and he believed that it did start and run, and he threw a price out of $3,500. Now, I didn't really want to pay that at first, and at least he did throw a price out because I don't like pricing other people's stuff. I would hate to throw a price out of $500 on something like this just for the owner to laugh in my face. But I, talk, I told the guy that I would think it over a little bit, and at first I wasn't really going to even call the guy back, but the more I thought about it and the more I thought about how popular my yellow truck is, I thought, well, you know, there aren't really a lot of these made. Maybe I could go down there, throw a decent offer at the guy and see if he would take it. So I took a day off of work. I drive my brown rollback about 35 miles away. I show up at the guy's business, talk to him for a little bit. Seems like a very nice gentleman. And I said, well, I do have a need for the truck. I would like to fix it up and drive it. And if you would take $2,500, I would jump on it, so. Now the gentleman didn't just jump on the offer. He thought it over. He sat there and kind of pondered to himself. And then he asked me what was my plans for the truck if I was to buy it. Now, my plans were, whenever I told the gentleman, just like they are now and I'm telling you, I plan on basically getting the truck running and driving and kind of driving it like it is. Now, that means I'll get good wheels and tires on it, ones that hold air and aren't dry rotted. I'll fix the brakes, fix any other little issues, you know, replace some hoses and whatnot, and I'll also maybe put a quick paint job on the truck. But uh, I may even try to use the flatbed off of the yellow F600, or may use part of it, cut it down, make it a little bit smaller, a gooseneck hitch, something of that nature. There's a few other options that I may go with. Uh, I could put a utility bed on the truck or something of that nature, but I was just basically wanting to use it like it was. Now, the gentleman was pretty honest with me. I mean, he seemed like he was honest in everything he told me, what he knew about the truck. And he told me there were a couple other gentlemen that actually stopped and asked him about it. You know, mind you, this is on a busy road, so I do believe that. But uh, he said nobody ever wanted to throw a reasonable offer out on the truck. So he still thought about the price for a little bit, and he finally said, you know, you have a way to move it. If you can load it up on your rollback and get it out of here today, I'll take the 2500 bucks." So I think that was a phenomenal price, especially for what I have in this truck right now, getting it running and driving to this point. I have probably less than $50 in this truck. And kind of the biggest point for me doing this in some of these other videos, I wanna to try to inspire other people. It's not just me, it's not just this instance where I bought a truck and I put a little bit of money into it and got it running. I want anybody out there right now like you who's watching this video to take this as a word of advice. Just because something sat for a while doesn't mean that it's worthless. Now I got this truck running and I think I'm going to take it down off of the camera stand and we're going to go into the garage where it's less windy and I'll go over why I think it's such a good deal for the price I paid for this truck. Now if you watch my videos, there's a pretty good chance that you're a gearhead. And one of the biggest questions that you're looking at right now, you probably may not even realize you've asked yourself numerous times over the years on different projects. The big question always is, what is it worth? What is it actually worth? Now, that's a pretty broad spectrum because it really depends on what somebody's willing to pay for it themselves. That's what it basically boils down to. I thought the truck was worth $2,500. There may be somebody out there watching this video right now laughing to themselves thinking that they wouldn't have paid more than scrap price for the truck. Now, there also may be somebody on the other end of the spectrum thinking that they were missing this certain international truck from their collection and there's some kind of crazy international truck collector that would have paid $10,000 for this truck. I mean, you never really know. It all boils down to, what do you think it's worth? Now, I'll go over the prices on this truck of what I think these parts are worth. Now, in my area, a Dana 60 front end for a one-ton truck, depending on if it's a single wheel or a dual wheel front end, they range anywhere from about $1,200 to $1,500. And that also kind of depends on if it's a ball joint versus a kingpin front end. But you got to think this is a Timken front end for the truck. It's heavier than a one ton because it's in a two ton truck. And this front end actually has lockouts on it. So even if it's not as heavy as a lot of the other Rockwells are of that year, this front end is actually pretty rare. So I think that it would be worth in the neighborhood of $1,400. So we'll split the difference on that. Now, I'll also kind of count the rear end together as a matched pair because they're matched gears, so we'll go with that. But the next thing to kind of talk about is the transfer case. 
Now that is a divorce transfer case in the truck. I still haven't looked any numbers up on it to see what size of transfer case it is. But even if you're looking for one out of like a one ton Dodge truck or a Ford High Boy, you're looking somewhere to six to seven hundred dollars. Now I don't know anything about this one like I've said, so I'll go ahead and split the difference and I'll write five hundred bucks on here because I also haven't really tried it out in four low to see if it actually does work well or if it's had water or anything in it. So for the case and just for the time being that it actually did move the truck, I'll write down that it's worth five hundred bucks. Now the engine in the truck is really nothing to write home about. I mean it is a big six cylinder engine. I believe it's a 308 or a 308 cubic inch engine and I know they do use them in some farm equipment. Now it does start up and run pretty good so I would think it would be worth anywhere from three to four hundred dollars so I'll put three hundred dollars on here because I would think that a farmer if he was needing an engine for his tractor would probably spend every bit of that to get his tractor up and going. Now the transmission is really nothing special in the truck. It is a five speed. It does have a really weird shift pattern to it. I don't know if it's a Clark or maybe one of the other manufacturers, but it does actually work. It seemed like when I put it in each gear that it did pull the truck forward and reverse did actually work. So I'll go ahead and just kind of write $250 for it because I'm not sure if it's worth more or less. Now the cab to the truck. The cab, if you remember, the roof is in horrible condition on that, but I do have a clean and clear title that is in my name. Now that cab actually fits pickup trucks, not the uh, Lodestar like I was thinking. It's the same exact version of a pickup cab between the Lodestar and the pickup, but, if that makes any sense, the Lodestar actually has a little bit higher of a roof line, but with the clean title, I would think that cab would fetch at least $250. Now the front end is pretty rare on that truck. Like I said, they only made that front end style for two years. So I would only imagine that that front end, even being damaged on the passenger side, would probably bring for the hood, the radiator support, and the uh, grill, I would think it would be somewhere around $400. So we'll split the difference with that. Maybe worth more, maybe worth less with the passenger side damaged fender. Now to take into account on the front clip that the hood is actually good on the truck, it does open and shut well on both sides, the butterfly hood, and it does have the headlight rings that go around the headlights, so that's why I've marked it at $400. Could be worth more, could be worth less, I'm just throwing out ballpark figures right now. Now the next thing to talk about is that big massive bumper on the front. Now it does not have a winch on it, but a lot of those old two-ton trucks were the same frame width, so somebody could take that right off of this truck and put it on another one and just bolt it basically on there. So. With the steel that it's made out of, I would think that would be worth at least $250. Now there's also some random stuff to throw in there like the radiator and some of the you know, linkages and the four-wheel drive shifters and stuff like that that you could throw in there and kind of talk about. But we'll go ahead and tally these prices up right now and I'll go ahead and show you what I think this truck is roughly worth. Now I do realize that just because I write these prices on this chunk of cardboard, that does not guarantee that they would ever bring that. Some of them may bring more, some of them may bring less. I just wanted to throw up some comparative prices on some similar items that have been selling on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Now if you look at this grand total, now that's excluding like the radiator and some of the miscellaneous items of this truck, the grand total comes up to $3,350, which is actually $850 more than what I paid for this truck. So I don't think that's a bad price for having less than $50 into that truck up and running and driving. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or a question down below. Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you're into. And just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. Now that this video is over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.